Should you pre-order Payday 3 or should you not? That is the question for today's topic, and I'm going to explain to you why I think you should and why you shouldn't. Now, first, I'm going to note the uh, differences in the pre-order versions. So we'll go ahead and take a quick look at these here. There's a standard silver and gold edition. Now, as you can see, it's just pretty much as plain as day. Um, if you get the pre-order version for the standard edition, all, you, all you're going to get is just a trifecta loot bag. It's just going to be a mask, an outfit, some gloves. And to some people, you may be thinking, well, maybe that's not a whole lot. But if you get the silver edition, you'll be getting the dark sterling mask, which me personally, I think that one's pretty cool. This might be the version that I'm going to go for the most. Um, actually, simply because it's got three days early access and it's also got the season pass involved. Now, at the moment, as I'm making this video, um, we're not exactly sure. It's not clear what's in these season passes and we might not know until a little bit later. But it says we got two heists, a tailor pack and a weapons pack. We could be expecting something similar to this is how we had it in Payday 2. Um, there's a lot of DLC in Payday 2 after like 200 something plus updates that the game had. The next edition up is Gold Edition, which maybe not a lot of people might go for. They might not go for it. And that's understandable, probably because of the price uh, the price point, the tag that's got on there. But it will have the uh, season pass for the one year, which is going to include the other six months, which is going to be four highs, tailor packs, and more weapons packs. Now, after looking into all of that, let's get into the reasons why I think you should. Now, for Payday 3, um, it's just pretty much the pre-order bonuses. If you like the outfits, if you don't, then um, that's one thing you can always just hold off. You can always wait until the reviews come out and the game actually comes out and you can say, well, you know what, maybe um, I'll just get the game now, but you won't be getting that 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 outfit, which is fine. Um, and depending on what version you get, as long as it's the silver or the gold, you'll be getting the early access. So if you're a diehard Payday 2 fan or you've been eyeballing 3 for a long time and you just really want to get in the game um, as soon as you can, then maybe one of these two options might be for you, or rather I say maybe just one, if you're not looking to drop uh, a ton of money on a gold edition, which is fine. Um, but you can always refund the pre-order depending on the platform that I think you're on. I know with Steam, I'm a lot more familiar with that. Um, you can always pre-order the game and get the bonuses on your account. And as long as you purchase the game um, under two weeks and you have less than two hours played, you can just refund the game. So you could probably buy the game um, about maybe a day or two before it actually releases. You get the pre-order bonuses. And um, as long as you keep it underneath that time frame, two weeks and two hours, you can just simply play the game maybe a little bit and you can also look at a bunch of reviews and see what people say or other gameplays on YouTube at the time that it's released. And if you think that it's going to be something that you're going to want to keep, then you just keep the game in your library and you're all set and you got the bonuses or you can just refund it and um, you can consider it maybe at a later time. Starbreeze or Overkill also has a pretty good history of not screwing fans over and they're also really good at admitting when they're wrong. They, they had an interview at GamesCon where they talked about that, where they've had updates that the fans have really loved and the community has really loved. But there's also some updates where you're just bound to encounter those types of issues where not everybody likes what you come out with. And for Overkill to uh, see something like that and notice that the community is a little upset when they have an update that, that uh, doesn't really seem like it's right, they admit when they're wrong. And then they also come out and say, hey, we're sorry about that. And they're going to fix it. One of the other things I want to talk about is why you should, and it's probably going to be my last part of why I say you would, um, is the price point. And for 40 bucks, you can not only just pre-order it, it's no type of extra money that's added onto it, it's just the price of the base game. And you compare that to, say, let's put Call of Duty, right? So they just had Modern Warfare 2 last year, which I am one that happened to get it for $70 in the US. And they just came out with another Call of Duty this year that has been announced, which is Modern Warfare 3 which is um, you know, a topic for some other people to talk about, but it looks very similar, and it's also $70. And that's something that a lot of people have talked about, saying, well, it kind of just looks like a DLC. But I'm not going to get into all that. But just consider the price point, and maybe it's something that might uh, pique a lot of people's interest, because it certainly has to me and some other people that I've talked to about it. Now, moving on to the reasons why I think you shouldn't. Recent experiences in history with other titles lacking content. That is going to be something that uh, we haven't truly seen. We've seen a lot of the beta gameplay features, um, which looks really good at its core. The game's gunplay seems to have been improved on all aspects um, with them switching to Unreal Engine 4, which in the future they have noticed, or they have uh, announced rather, that they will be making the transition to Unreal Engine 5, which is going to be pretty cool, but at the time when making Payday 3, um, Unreal Engine 5 had just come out, but they already had all their assets and everything in a 4, and they wanted to keep that a good experience um, and make sure the game was just right before they later implement and just switch it over to a brand new engine, um, even though the game hadn't even come out yet. We have had games in the past, plenty of them, where the content is um, 
maybe not something that everybody would expect to put it that way. So people will pre-order the game, um, even with a company that has a good reputation, and then they get into it, and then it's like, wow, this is not what I was expecting at all. Uh, one of the titles I probably will throw out there is uh, Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk right now I think is doing pretty good. They're, go they're coming out with an update, and it's supposed to fix a lot of stuff, but then again, it's probably one of those titles that um, hasn't shown too much, but maybe maybe a good amount. I'm not really sure about that. I don't, I don't personally play Cyberpunk, so maybe if you guys know, let me know. But uh, CD Projekt Red, they, if you don't know who they are, they came out with The Witcher 3, which I, as far as I've heard is a huge success. I know, I know, I'm a, I'm a shill for not having played The Witcher 3, I'm sure. But that game had a bunch of success around it. And then they come out with Cyberpunk, and I had a couple friends that pre-ordered it, and when it came out, it was just a buggy mess. And some of the content was, uh, um, what I heard was not up to par what they were thinking, although I heard the story was pretty good. But I'm not going to push in that too much, because then again, that's part of the area where I'm lacking of knowledge about other companies. But there have been uh, a lot of stuff out there where they just want the pre-order and then the game comes out and so forth and so forth. And probably the last reasons of why you shouldn't is uh, just falling back on a lack of content. Like then again, we haven't seen the full game, just a beta. But I'd say for sure, just keep an eye on reviews and uh, just keep looking at gameplay features around the time when it comes out. This last bit, I'm going to talk to you about what I would recommend and how actually I'm going to do it. So uh, I mentioned this earlier, I'm actually going to pre-order probably one of the two versions of just the base or the silver edition. Because um, if you're going to get the game regardless, you may as well just pre-order it and then just watch for those reviews and then make the decision to keep or refund the game. Just right around the same time. And that is probably going to be a lot of the way that most of the people are going to do it. Um, if they find the appeal in that pre-order stuff. If it's not enough, then that's fine. I mean, you can always buy the game at a later date, but it's not like that pre-order stuff is going to come back to my knowledge. You know, there may be some some things where hopefully we come out with this kind of stuff, but then it's just a reskin, but for the or a recolor of the pre-order stuff. However, this company has had a really good um, relationship with this community, in my opinion, and for everything that I have seen. So that's why I would recommend something like that, and that is the way that I'm going to do it. Just to recap with all this, uh, to give a bit on the game history, um, like I said, they they've had good and bad updates, and they're really really good at admitting when the updates are bad and they're fixing it which i i believe helps build trust in the company to the community um in the way that they engage with all that now speaking of engagement with the community um they've actually been posting on their uh youtube for payday 3 the engagement of uh posting diaries to their channel and about the gameplay features and skills and how the currency works and all that kind of stuff and how they have this premium currency that's even in the game that is not actually tied to real money and no microtransactions are anything like that that we've seen um, but they have announced that the premium currency that's in there C C credits or something like that is actually used with in-game cash um, and like I said not tied to real money so I'm gonna post a link in the description down below to some of their uh, diaries that they have put up where they just talk about the game and they're completely honest with what's coming out um, and the, so far the feedback on that stuff has been really good um, as far as I've seen but uh, that is pretty much gonna wrap it up for now I'm gonna try to keep it short or I tried to but uh, let me know what you guys think, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.